Good morning. And welcome to Zion Lutheran Pembroke worship service for January the 17th, the second Sunday after Epiphany. We are blessed to have today our soloists, Jan Scheidt, Diane Wolfgram, Lillian Michael, Melanie Mason, under the direction of Blaine Sack. Our leader to, reader today is, what's your last name? <laughs> Lorraine McKenzie. And we give our thanks to those that serve and bring the service to your homes, and their names will be on the credits at the end of the service. My name is Pastor Lena Jensen. I am the interim pastor here at Zion Lutheran Pembroke. We pray for your health and safety during this COVID shutdown period, and we pray for your health and safety uh, over this period. Now I invite you to prepare a space in your homes that is comfortable. You might want to light a candle to represent the Lord's presence with us. And also, you might want to have a glass of juice or wine and a piece of bread, for we will commune virtually together today. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Let us invite the Holy Spirit into our space. Let's take a deep breath. Let us prepare ourselves. Today, we light a candle in remembrance of Leona Hine, member of Zion Lutheran Church, Pembroke, who passed away on a week ago Saturday. Let us pray. O oh, God of endless comfort, our beloved Leona Hine has left this world Receive her soul and may she rest in peace. Clothe her mortality with immortality, according to your solemn promise. We are comforted by the knowledge that she died in Christ. We will meet again in our glorified bodies to reign with you in glory. Our sorrow is eclipsed by joy at the bright future that awaits us as your children and your inheritance. As we cherish this confident hope, we are steadfast and immovable, knowing our work is not in vain. Amen. Thank you, Blaine, for your music. Let us remember Leona Hines' family this week as they mourn. God, your steadfast, never giving up love is so huge that it fills the heavens. Your faithfulness is so vast that it rises to the clouds. 
Under your loving wings, we find comfort and refuge. In your house of love, we sit around the table feasting. Your life and love are like a fountain in our lives. You are the love-filled light that allowed us to see and understand. O oh God, your faithful love is precious to us. Come, let us worship. Come, let us worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. pray. You invite us, O oh God, to live in your ways, and you give, a, give us to each other to know and to love as we journey in this life. Show us your will for all creation. 
Help us to listen to your urgings with prayerful hearts so that we may honor what you have made in the name of the Holy Trinity, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue our worship with the word. First reading is from 1 Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesights had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had yet not gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you have called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever, for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blasphemy, God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning, Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son? He said, Here I am. Eli said, What was it you were told? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what he seems to what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all the Israel from Dan to Bisheba knew that Samuel was trust, a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 139. Lord, you have searched me out. O Lord, you have known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it 
to all together. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. My days were fashioned before they became to be. How deep I find your thoughts, O oh God. How great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand to count them all. My lifespan would need to be like yours. Today, we have Bishop Larry Kochendorfer, Bishop for the Synod of Alberta and the Territories, with the Gospel of John and the Epiphany Sermon Series. Sure. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Na Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good to come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, that we may see and taste the grace of God afresh. Come, Holy Spirit, that we might share the grace of God with others. Come, Holy Spirit, that we might bear witness with our whole lives to the grace of God made manifest and available to us in Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Welcome to the sermon series that our Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada is providing for congregations throughout the Sundays after Epiphany. I'm Larry Kokendorfer, and I serve as the Bishop of the Synod of Alberta and the Territories. It's great to be with you this Sunday. It was a Thursday. It was a moment so alive that it was almost unbearable. It was so simple, really. I had brought our niece Amanda, who was 15 at the time, and our youngest son Jordan, who was then four, over to the church on a Thursday afternoon. And while I was in my office returning a couple of telephone calls, they were in the sanctuary. With the phone calls completed, I threw on my jacket and walked into the sanctuary, where I stopped in a moment of epiphany, a moment of revealing, 
a moment filled with the glory of God, God's presence, wonderful and mysterious. Amanda was sitting at the piano playing while Jordan was distributing communion to his invisible congregants who were kneeling at the altar rail. After a moment, he saw me standing at the door to the sanctuary and he yelled out to me, we're playing communion, Dad. And I looked at this four-year-old dressed in gray sweats with a face still partially covered with lunch and his face glowing with an utterly new discovery. He was sharing communion. And I saw a glimpse of God's presence, a revelation of God's work. The father, the pastor in me saw in a fleeting moment, the emerging worshiper, communion sharer, worship leader in our son. Something so touching, so incandescent, so alive that it was almost beyond bearing. And I was changed, transformed. Is it simply too ordinary, too unsuspecting, too unexpected? Or is it too wonderful, this moment of clarity, of unveiling, of revealing of God's presence? We've entered the season of epiphany, a season of revealing, of appearance, of manifestation. Epiphany an immediate and meaningful understanding of something, surprising, sudden, profound, epiphany, an illuminating discovery, realization or disclosure, a revelation. What is revealed in this season is what it means that God became human, that God entered our world no longer satisfied just to be with us, but now is one of us. When that happens, when the incarnation happens, we change too. Our humanity changes. Suddenly, who we see ourselves to be can no longer remain the same because we have seen God in who we are. We tend to expect that epiphany is only about the revelation of Jesus, about seeing Jesus, of witnessing Jesus in various revealing moments. It is not supposed to be about being found ourselves, but, but John's gospel invites us to imagine that these can be one and the same. That is, seeing Jesus in those revelatory moments, those unexpected moments, is also when you find yourself, who you are, who you are called to be. In those moments of seeing Jesus, you realize your identity as a follower, a disciple. And you see a glimpse, and perhaps a new glimpse of something you have not seen before when it comes to your own faith story, your own understanding of what it means to be a disciple, your answering of your baptismal call, follow me. Maybe this epiphany season might take on a mirror effect. That is, when you hear these texts, when you look for Jesus, when you experience these revelatory moments of Jesus, you simultaneously see something about yourself and ask, what does this mean? John's gospel is full of these moments of epiphany and of what Je following Jesus will look like. For this gospel writer, it will mean taking John 3.16 seriously. It will mean taking the witness of the woman at the well seriously. It will mean finding those who have been cast out of communities for their courage to confess their faith in Jesus, like the man born blind. It will mean believing that the Spirit is indeed your very breath as Jesus sends you out into the world. It will mean being thrown out yourself, rejected for insisting that God's love for the world and everyone in it, everyone, is actually true. The incarnation of Jesus changes everything. The revealing of Jesus changes us. These epiphanies transform people. 
Listen to Martin Luther King Jr., who we will remember tomorrow, and his description of an epiphany and his response in his book, Stride Toward Freedom. I was ready to give up. With my cup of coffee sitting untouched before me, I tried to think of a way to move out of the picture without appearing a coward. In this state of exhaustion, when my courage had all but gone, I decided to take my problem to God. With my head in my hands, I bowed over the kitchen table and prayed loud. The words I spoke to God that midnight are still vivid in my memory. I am here taking a stand for what I believe is right, but now I'm afraid. The people are looking to me for leadership, and if I stand before them without strength and courage, they too will falter. I'm at the end of my powers. I have nothing left. I've come to the point where I can't face it alone. At that moment, I experienced the presence of the divine as I had never experienced God before. It seemed as though I could hear the quiet assurance of an inner voice saying, stand up for justice, stand up for truth, and God will be at your side forever. Almost at once, my fears began to go. My uncertainty disappeared. I was ready to face anything. Martin Luther King Jr was transformed by this epiphany, often referred to as his vision in the kitchen. Nathaniel's epiphany, in which he saw who Jesus was, changed Nathaniel, who then proclaimed Jesus as Rabbi, Son of God, King of Israel. It was a Thursday. It was a moment so alive that it was almost unbearable. We're playing communion, Dad. I suspect that most of us glimpse these moments of epiphany, of aliveness, of revelation, of unveiling, of God's presence, the Spirit's work, in the regular, ordinary patterns of life, in a blinding moment of conversion, in a moment of deepened awareness of the presence of God, in a moment of realizing the truth and call of Christ in the play ritual of a child. Through parents ever so lovingly showing a child how to swing a bat. Through our young children singing, you are holy, you are whole, beautiful Savior. O oh, come all you faithful. In the hike up a mountain, mountain to pray. In a word of absolution. In an act of justice and peace in a moment of sacramental meeting, when we hear the drops of water drowning and bringing with the word new life, when the bread in our hands and the wine on our lips suddenly acquires a flavor and a vintage which takes us out of time and out of our human limitations and intoxicates us with God. As we glimpse God at work, this unveiling, this revelation, this epiphany, we hold it in our heart and we return to life different, transformed ourselves, because for one shining, mysterious moment we have seen. These glimpses don't evaporate our doubts or tell us what to do next. Nothing will be visibly different. But beloved people of God, siblings in Christ, it does make a difference to have seen, even for a moment, a taste, a glimpse, something so alive that it's almost by, beyond bearing. For we return to daily life, back to work, back to ministry, to family, to this time of COVID pandemic, different, changed, transformed, back to where mission and ministry is engaged, where the love of God is shared and where grace is gifted, where we're invited to live out our baptismal calling, to follow Jesus in the midst of our daily lives, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, 
to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Epiphany is a short season. Expect to discover many things about Jesus and in the process anticipate learning something about yourself. Sometimes the change is monumental, sometimes incremental. Either way, something will happen. Something epiphanous. Let us pray. Into your hands, almighty God, we place ourselves, our minds to know you, our hearts to love you, our wills to serve you for we are yours. Into your hands, incarnate Savior, we place ourselves. Receive us and draw us after you, that we may follow your steps. Abide in us and enliven us by the power of your indwelling. Into your hands, O hovering Spirit, we place ourselves. Take us and fashion us after your image. Let your comfort strengthen, your grace renew, and your fire cleanse us, soul and body, in life and in death, in this world of shadows, and in your changeless world of light eternal, now and forever. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, 
let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need, saying, let us pray, have mercy, O God. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world, and for all servants of the gospel, that the following, that following Jesus, the church lives, lives out its calling every day. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, and for all that God has marvelously made, that we would serve as wise stewards of earth, our home. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacekeepers and military personnel, and for the leaders of governments, that they provide protection to all people, especially those most vulnerable, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those lacking food or shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, for those who are imprisoned or homebound, especially that God console all who suffer, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For our neighborhoods, for visitors joining us for the first time or returning, keep them safe. Help us stay healthy and safe with no further spread of the COVID-19 virus. And for those absent from our gathering, that all who seek to know God are nourished by word and sacrament, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, especially Leona Hine, that their lives give us a vision of gospel in action, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the gifts of offerings we receive here at the church. Because of your generosity to us, God of love, we have courage to be generous. Bless our gifts. May they bring acts of generous love to make it clear that your love extends beyond the doors of this house. The entire cosmos is your house of love. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we would at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he has shone forth to all nations. 
In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned into wine, he revealed your glory. And so with this choir, all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to all his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. We will partake in the bread and the, and the wine, wine in your own homes together. body of Christ shed for you. The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our life, our strength, our food, we give you thanks for sustaining with the body and blood of your Son. By your Holy Spirit, enliven us to be, with his, be his body in the world, that more and more we will give you praise and serve your earth and its many peoples. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. 
The God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing so that you may bound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. bearing God's love to others, that everyone might experience the joy, hope, courage, and gifts of God. Go in love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 